Hey guys, uh, I'm Ethan Moore from Stockholm Supply. Um, I was uh, got an email from Mike, uh, who has just bought a Little Ripper, and he put it on his bandsaw, he made his first cut, and he got drift. Big problem. Now, first thing I want you guys to know, and I told Mike all this already, but just so everybody else knows here, the way you gotta look at the Little Ripper, the way you gotta look at it, is it does not eliminate blade drift, what it does is it prevents that. So I'm gonna demonstrate that here and show you what I'm talking about. So let me make a first little cut here, show you what I'm doing. This is just a piece of hickory, maybe six inches tall or so. Really hard, really hard wood, but um, watch what I can do with it here. Now let's just imagine. So yeah, you can guys can see that there. I'm cutting nice and straight. Very, very good cut on that piece of hickory. Now let's just imagine, before I made that cut, I was using a fence. Before I made that cut, I may have been freehanding. Um, before I was using the little ripper. This is essentially what you do. Now I got this hunk of wood here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push with this piece of wood on the side of my blade while that's cutting um, and this is kind of the same action that we might be doing when we're using a fence or freehand so watch what I do here You guys have probably all seen those burn marks before. Those burn marks happen when we're putting side pressure on the blade. And a lot of you guys that are free-handed or use the fence, you've seen those before. Every time you're getting burning, almost guaranteed you're putting side pressure on that blade. Now what I just did by putting pressure on one side of my blade more than the other, I have made this side here just a little bit duller compared to this side. That means, well this side's sharper, that blade's gonna wanna cut better that direction. What I just did here is basically what you're doing with a fence. Um, so now that blade's gonna drift. So watch this here. So it should be cutting into the side of my ripper, away from the bandsaw. Let me make another cut to show you this. Cut nice and thin so you guys can see this. All right. Now you guys can see that. My cut is really thin right here, but as I get further down the piece of wood, it gets far thicker. I didn't want to cut any further because I didn't want to get into the steel of my little ripper here. Let me take it out so you can see. That's what happened, so you can see right along the top here. Basically, again, I'm gonna reiterate it here. This little ripper is not gonna eliminate blade drift. It's gonna prevent blade drift. So if your blade, if you use a fence, or if you free-handed with it, or a resaw pin, and you've put side pressure on the blade, if you've ever made burn marks with that blade, very good chance that blade is going to drift. Long story short, when you get the little ripper, really, you should start with a brand new blade, and this little ripper will prevent you, the woodworker, from ever binding that blade, therefore, from ever getting drift. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if anyone else has any questions, you can email me at info at stockhomesupply.com or just comment on the video. Now, I have also just started a Instagram account. It's called, well, at ETH Answers. So you can follow me on there if you want. Thank you very much.